show starts with this spectacular Roman statue of Neptune or Poseidon, the, the god of the sea. And he was the inspiration for the show. This, this statue belongs to the museum. It's been in the museum's collection since 1986. And uh, it, it is the largest and best preserved marble statue of the god in the United States. So Tampa is, is very lucky to have it. Um, and it made sense, I thought, since Tampa is located in a major port by the sea, to, to have a show that looks at this god and, and his realm, who's nearly complete. He's, he's missing his trident, which is his normal uh, attribute, the, the big three-pronged spear, sort of a, a fishing spear. Um, but what you will see, in addition to the statue, is the largest bronze trident that I know of. It's on loan from the J. Paul Getty Museum in Los Angeles. As you walk through the show, you'll see many representations of the god on, on painted pottery, on gems, on coins, um, smaller scale sculptures in bronze. Um, and in, in most of those instances, he's, he's holding his trident. In the case of our marble statue, he would have had the trident probably made of a separate material, and that was lost over time. Um, the significance of the, the huge trident from the Getty is that it probably belonged to a statue of the god, which no longer survived. So in this case, we have a statue without a trident. In that case, we have a trident without a statue. The show has these three themes, which are outlined in the subtitle, myth, cult, and daily life. Myth, I think people understand. These are the stories that were told, handed down generation after generation, about Poseidon and the other Olympian gods, Zeus, Athena, Dionysus. Um, each had his own realm, or her own realm. Each had his or her roles that they played in various myths. And so you'll see representations of Poseidon in many different media. The, the second category of the show, cult, um, is, is the word that scholars use when they're talking about ancient religion. So ancient religion, obviously very different from the, the monotheistic faiths that are most prevalent in the world today. In antiquity, people believed in many, many different gods. So you prayed to Poseidon if you needed help at sea or, or if you were going fishing and were praying for a good, a good catch or in thanks for a good catch afterwards. Uh, Poseidon was also the god of horses and of natural forces like earthquakes. He was also a god who provided asylum to people who were in trouble. And so in, in many different situ situations, people would pay cult to Poseidon. They, they would worship him. And in that section of the show, you'll see small sculptures of the god that may have been used a, a, as, uh, as votive offerings for, for worship to the god. You'll see small representations of fish and other sea creatures that would have been appropriate for Poseidon and of horses as well. And then the final section of the show, Daily Life, looks less at Poseidon and more at his realm, the sea. And so you'll see many representations of ancient sea life, ancient sea food, um, and then also many uh, representations of boats and fishing. And so you sort of go from seafood to seafaring. And both of those were very important parts of life, daily life in antiquity, much as they are today, especially here in Tampa. This show, My Generation, Young Chinese Artists, is a look at 27 young Chinese artists. And that is to say they were all born after the end of the Cultural Revolution, after the fall of Mao, um, the year 1976. Um, almost all of them are, are single children, results of the one-child policy in China. And so a big portion of the artwork on display here really looks at how that has impacted these artists. Well, the piece behind me um, is by an artist named Jin Shan, who's actually one of the older artists in the show. He's in his, uh, in his later 30s. Um, this is called No Man's City. And this, this artwork actually belongs to the Tampa Museum of Art. So I'm particularly excited about this one. It was specially commissioned by the museum for this exhibition. And the artist um, planned it out in his studio in China shipped it here in many, many pieces, and then spent about two weeks here assembling it. And so you can see it looks like a very futuristic structure. Um, what Jinshan had in mind is sort of the relationship that he had with his father and the relationship of his generation to previous generations. Um, and so you see this very futuristic structure, 
but projected upon it are these um, moving images, which Jinshan has taken from his father's artwork. His father was a very traditional uh, artist who did set designs in China, and so he had a very limited repertoire of what he was permitted to represent in his artwork. And so Jinshan has taken those and projected them on this futuristic structure to sort of talk about this relationship. So one first about this show is, is this new generation, as, I'm sa as I said before. It's 27 artists. Many of them have never been on view in the United States before. Um, the other first for us is that this show is split. It's shared between the Tampa Museum of Art here in Tampa and the Museum of Fine Arts in St. Petersburg. And so I would, I would definitely urge all of the viewers to come here and see our half of the show and, and then go over to St. Pete and see the other half. And you can buy joint tickets at either museum and, and see both, both parts of the show.